May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we've been very lucky because each week we are tackling a topic with our friend Dr. Daryl Appleton, licensed mental health counselor, and we've talked about some great things already for this month, but today we're talking about ultimatums and boundaries. This is certainly something that absolutely anyone, you know, can really recognize in their own lives. Let's talk about what an ultimatum is and what a boundary is. I love that. That's a great place to start. Boundaries are something that keeps me safe or keeps my interests safe. It allows me to express what I need and mm -hmm. I set the expectations. Ultimatums sometimes can control a situation and that's not always a bad thing, it's mm -hmm. just how they're used. So one's directly for me, one is to control a situation and the outcome of that situation. I think the more controversial of the two would be ultimatum. So let's dive into that one a little bit more. What would be an example kind of of an ultimatum and you know why do you think that would be a route for someone to go in. I think if you sign any employee handbook, there are ultimatums mm -hmm. left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. So if you steal, you will be fired. That's an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. I know if I want to work here that I need to behave in X, Y, and Z way in mm -hmm. order to stay here. So it's a way to say at the end of the day, if this is done, there is no more continuing on for us. In a personal capacity, mm -hmm. it feels a little different. Yeah. And I think people can get there, especially we think about romantically mm -hmm. or in friendships or in relationships with our parents or family that if people continue to hurt you and disrespect your boundaries at some point there might need to be an ultimatum so in that case then an ultimatum is a good thing I think that I you know sometimes think that an ultimatum might be a negative thing because you're kind of you know not working through something let's say yeah. when is it good when is it bad yeah. or how do you know the difference it, context matters. Mm. So if you're in a new relationship and if you say, if you text another mm -hmm. person of the opposite sex, same mm -hmm. sex, whatever, I, we're breaking up, you're trying to control mm. the situation okay. and trying to control the person's behaviors. If you say, listen, you've disrespected me, we've talked about this, this is not going anywhere, you continuously do the thing that I'm saying hurts me, yeah. I don't know if we can continue on together. Yeah. It's still an ultimatum, but again, context very much matters. Now let's talk about boundaries. I think boundaries are extremely important for everyone. However, many people can struggle with setting a boundary and maybe they set a boundary, but they don't hold a boundary. Mm. How do you do that? <laughs> that is the question, <laughs> How Ashley. How do you do that? <laughs> that is the question. First, you need to understand your message and your audience. So if you need to, you need to sit down and say, what am I trying to say and who am I trying to say it to? So if you're saying to somebody like, listen, I I hate coming home when the dishes aren't done, mm -hmm. I need your help, or you know, we continue to fight. Mm -hmm. So you go to your significant other, I'm using this as a real world example, <laughs> sorry. Just saying. Sorry. <laughs> and saying, listen, I'm exhausted, I need some help around here, let's sit down and figure out what, what we can do about the dishes because it makes me feel resentful to mm -hmm. you when you come home and don't help. That way I'm opening up communication, I'm, I'm establishing mm -hmm. a way that I'm telling you how I feel, I'm not blaming you, I'm not shaming you, mm -hmm. but if it doesn't get done, then we're potentially not going to be able to live together or we're gonna have to mm -hmm. figure out a different route to take. And that's a very small example. It's a great example though, because I'm sure that's something that people deal with every day, we all deal with it. Even when people live alone, sometimes you have the argument with yourself in your own <laughs> head, like if you don't do the dishes, we're gonna have a problem. You're going to have a problem. But how do you hold a boundary? I think that can be really tough when you're yeah. kind of, you know, you don't really want to make waves, but you don't also want to be a pushover. How do you hold someone accountable or hold yourself accountable? I think you need to understand what the ultimatum or what the consequence is that's attached mm -hmm. to that boundary mm -hmm. because your boundaries are only as good as the action that you're willing mm -hmm. to take if those boundaries are crossed. So if it's, okay, you know, I'm going to break up with you or I'm going to leave this job or maybe it's with your children, like mm -hmm. I'm not, we're not going to the park. Mm -hmm. You need to set that realistically where you can say to yourself, I will not take them to the park. Mm -hmm. I will break up with them. If you're not going to do that, don't set it. Find yeah. something else that you feel comfortable, maybe a little uncomfortable but right. like that you're you're willing to say I can do this and I can hold myself to that always great advice thank you so much for joining us all month here and you can find more of Dr. Daryl's advice on her podcast or on our website roadshow.com